What's going on guys? Welcome to another video and in today's video I'm gonna give you some tips on how to write better code. Make your code cleaner and optimized. So one of the first things that we can start to is make your code visually organized. This is something that especially junior developers they lack a lot and so it's really hard to read their code. So let's start with this one. All right guys, so in here we have an index.html page. So this is the code that we have in here. This is the HTML. If you look at this HTML page in here, as you can see, the code is really not organized at all. It's really difficult to see what's going on in here. And this is something like really common on junior developers code uh, because uh, they just think that the code is in there, it's fine. But uh, once you organize your code, you will see that uh, is much better, is much easier for you to see what's going on in there. So let's start in here to organize our code. So we got our body tags, look, and we got the end in here. So let's start organizing this code. So in here, the body is going to be like the main parent of all our code. So let's grab this div in here, look, with the container and this h1 so let's press tab one time so we know that these two in here are direct children of body so i'm just gonna push in here this div which is this one from the container okay all right so this is one time indented now let's do the same in here for this row where does this row ends so is this one so let's put two times in and the same one in here. So now we know by indenting this that this row is inside of this container. Okay, look, same thing in here now for this call MD4. Look, this is where it starts. This is where it ends. So I'm just going to select everything. Press control bracket on my keyboard. Control bracket, control bracket. Look. Um, so this is the div row. This is the div column D4. And if you guys don't know what's this, I press Control and this command in here. Oops, this one. Control and this one to go indent forward and Control and this one in here to go to the left. Okay? If you want like the shortcuts for this kind of thing. So let's see what's going on in here. We got this div. Let's just like indent this quickly now. So we got this div in here. Now we got another div in here which can go inside and we got this SVG. So let's do the same with this SVG, put it in here. So we got this div, we got this one and then we got another div in here. So let's push this inside. And as you can see, just this part in here is already much more readable. You can see what is inside of what um, so makes the code much more readable. Okay, of course, I could just like go through it all of it let me just do this quickly in here so you guys could see I'm just gonna put this one in here oops okay we got this one in here we got this one inside then we got this div all these things in here and that's it okay um, I'm just going to leave the rest now. So as you can see now, the code is just much more readable. So let's go in here now to style.css. This is another thing that happens all the time with junior developers. Look, they put the CSS all over the place. Look at this. We got body, body background color. It's not organized, this code. Let's organize this a little bit. Let's put some space in here between the selector and these brackets in here. Look, um, same thing in here. Look, you put this curly braces in here down all all the same way style this in the same way so you can organize your code is not all like all over the place look just gonna put an indent in this one okay do the same in this one in here give some space look some space between the selector and this one in here as well and there it is our code now is much more readable and easy to understand so this is like the tip number one so the next tip on the list should be giving meaningful names to your variables. 
Alright guys, so for example, if we want to start giving some variables in here, let's say that we wanted to target all these buttons in here that says choose me, alright? So we could go in here into Visual Studio Code and into our JS file. I could put something like this to target all those buttons. I could put const um, buttons and then I could put in here document.get elements elements by uh, class name for example and the class name let me see what we have in here uh, we got choose button okay so I'm gonna put this one in here and this one okay so now we selected all of these buttons but uh, look there are more buttons in the page like this one in here go somewhere by the way this is just like some bootstrap code that I found online I just built this by myself with bootstrap if you are just giving like a name like buttons, let's say, you are working most of the times with a, with a team of, of developers, not just by yourself. So if someone comes to your code and they will see that you have in here a constant like buttons, they'll say, but what kind of buttons? What are you talking about? In here, you should really give some meaningful name, like for example, um, choose me buttons okay so i know that if there is some choose me buttons on the page this will target all of them you see we are even putting this on the, on the plural so it's not just one button but all of them uh, it, it, this could be the same for example let's say if you have an input where a, a user is going to write down their uh, their first name and you just put something like uh, a let uh, or const for example const name uh, you don't know what kind of name are you dealing are you are you dealing with some the name of a product the, na the name of a street or whatever so for example you could put uh, uh, the variable name like uh, first name or user first name using camel case look something like this give give meaningful names so you if you go back to your code or any other developer is using your code they know what kind of things the variables that you created are holding okay all right, so the next tip on the list should be don't repeat yourself. Probably you have heard about this principle, DRY, it means like don't repeat yourself. And this really separates the junior developers from the developers who have a, bi a bit more experience. Uh, so whenever you see that you are writing down some code and you are repeating yourself, probably there is a better way to write your code. So let's see this now in action. All right, guys, so let's see this example in here. If we want to click on one of these buttons and you want to change, for example, the background color of this button, you want to change this just like the color. If we go in here into Visual Studio Code, you could actually write down something like this, document.getElementById, for example, and each one of these buttons they have the id of card one card two card three so let's go in here and i'm going to put in here so card one dot add event listener and i want to add a click function okay i'm going to put in here an arrow function and now i'm going to do in here something like this uh element okay element dot class list dot add and I'm gonna put in here for example btn warning this is this is a um, bootstrap class okay I'm gonna save this I'm gonna refresh and look if I click on it look now it changes the color but if I'm gonna do the same for all the other uh, cards I'm just gonna copy this code look now I'm going to target the second one. Now I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to target the third card as well. If I'm going to refresh. Look, if I click in here, I click on this one or I click on this one. All of this is working. But if you go in here, look, you are repeating the same code like three times. OK, uh, so this is one of the principles don't repeat yourself DRY so we could actually do this in a more optimized way so let's for example go in here and let's just comment all this code out save this make sure it's not working anymore look now I could go in here and do something like array from these choose me buttons 
okay? We are using the ES6 syntax because when we select all of these elements in here, this is going to give us like an object. Uh, and we want to transform it into an array to do this array from. And then we can do a for each, okay? And now let's put this arrow function in here. And this is what we are going to do. I'm going to put in here an element. And I'm going to do in here element dot add add event uh, where is it element dot add event listener and then i'm going to pass in here a click and then i'm going to do a function okay and what this function is going to do so let's go in here is add i'm going to put this one in here okay just going to put in here element element and in here I'm just going to put L okay so element dot target dot class list dot add this one so let's refresh the page and see something is wrong in here so element dot add event listener is not a function uh, let's see something is wrong in here let's go back Ah, I know what's wrong in here. When we're saying array from, it shouldn't be this one with the with the quotes because we are selecting this variable in here from the top. Let's just refresh this now and see if it's working. I'm gonna click, look, now it's all work as we wanted. Okay, so we got this one now. So look, just with this little bit of code, replaced all of these other code. Imagine in here if we had like six cards, seven cards, eight, 10, 20. With just this code in here, you can use for all of it. And if you are just putting these like one by one, it would it would give you a lot of trouble, of course, to write all of this code. So don't repeat yourself. This is another tip that you can use to make your code more readable and efficient and clean. So the next tip is using modular code. If you never used modular code or you don't even know what is modular code, basically, if you have long lines of code, Probably you can break them down in small different uh, functions that uh, you can reuse in other parts of your website. And this makes your code much more readable and easy to understand. And, and you can you don't have even to repeat the code if you use like this kind of modular way. So let me just show you in here now. All right, so to show you how we can write some modular code, let me just first of all delete all this code that we have in here. Let's say that whenever we click on one of these buttons, let me just refresh, we want to not only uh, add this kind of um, class in here to see that it's selected, we also want to add some kind of um, box shadow and also maybe change the text. So let's go in here and I'm going to do in here. So element dot target dot text content is going to be equals to and then I'm going to put in here selected. OK, and also I can put in here. Uh, I'm just going to copy this one. OK. Element dot target dot class list dot add. I'm going to put in here shadow and then for example p3 this is all bootstrap classes guys okay so i'm gonna refresh in here i'm gonna click on it look now the text in here it says selected and also there is some kind of box shadow around this button as you can see look the other buttons they don't have it now let's say that this code in here that i have I want to apply the same thing in here to this button. This could be for many other buttons, but let me just show you in here. We would have to go in here, document dot uh, get element by ID and the ID is going to be card four. And then I want to add an event listener. Okay. And this is going to be a click. And then I want to run a function in here. And this function, let me just put in here like an element. It's going to be element dot target dot. I'm going to do basically exactly the same thing that is in here. Look, OK. I'm going to save this. Look, click in here and now it works as well in this button. OK, uh, now, as you can see, this code in here, look, is exactly the same 
the same that is in here. So when you are writing modular code, you could actually, you know, export this function out here. Let's say, for example, I'm going to put in here function button selected. Let's say that you wanted to do something like this. Okay. Now I'm going to put in here an E. You could put whatever you want. It's like a parameter. So E is like for the event. And now I could go in here and copy this out. Put this one in here. And I'm just going to put, for example, E for this one. And now I could go in here get rid of all of this code look and now just put this one in here make sure that is there I'm gonna pass this function in here okay save it and I'm gonna do the same in here in this one okay I'm just gonna go in here and get rid of this and I'm gonna pass this one okay look I'm going to refresh and if I click in here, it's working. Look, there is no errors or anything. It's working, it's working and it's working. As you can see, we just put this kind of modular code. We exported all that code into a function and now we can reuse it wherever we want. So this is the next tip that I wanted to give you is really write modular code to make your code more readable and uh, write less lines of code. All right, guys, so the last tip that I want to give you is really to write simple code. All the senior developers that they have a lot of experience, they can probably write just a small lines of code for what you can write, like a, lo a long list of lines of code if you are starting out. So really write as, as short code as you can and make it like very readable that you don't need to document, okay? I've heard a lot of people saying that it's really good, a good way to, uh, you know, document your code, put some comments here and there. But let me just show you in here why I disagree a bit about this. All right, guys, so in here, for example, let's say that I was starting to document my code in here and I'm gonna put a code, uh, some kind of comments in here saying that, uh, um, this function selects selects the button okay i'm gonna put this one in here i'm gonna put it as a comment this is like some kind of documentation but let's say for whatever reason now um you don't want this to to um to select the button other you're gonna for example this code was in here i wrote i wrote down this code and then uh, i put this documentation in here but uh, somewhere in the future someone like the manager the company or whatever they want whenever you click on this button they want for example to remove this card okay for example you click and it's going to remove this card so so there, there's going to be another developer most of the times they are in a rush or something like that and then they go in here and they write down, for example, instead of choose me buttons, they will say uh, remove, choose me, something like this. I'm just like in taking this out of my mind now. Remove, choose me buttons. Now we got this one in here and I'm going to put in here remove button. Okay, so look at this now. This developer, this other developer that is writing down this code is just like in a rush trying to update this code instead of the selecting, removing it, okay, removing all of these when they click. And for some reason, they forgot to update this code because look, the guy, this happens all the time. They updated the code, they put in here, but then they just don't bother or anything. And now there is a piece of uh, kind of comment code in here that is misleading people that is saying this function selects the button. And then all of the sudden, somewhere other, uh, a bit more in the future, they will come in here and they say this function selects the button. And then all of the sudden they will see that this removes the button instead. So really, you should write simple code that you can read straight away without any of this kind of documentation that you can come in here and see what's going on. Look, 
I have a function remove button so I know that this function in here is gonna remove the button or whatever um, so yeah Basically, that's it, guys, for this kind of uh, tips on how to make your code simple and more readable. Alright, guys, I hope you like these kind of tips to make your code more readable, more clean and more optimized. Um, it really shows when you are starting out, if you, if you put some time and effort in these kind of things, it will really help you become a better developer. It will really help you write better code that other people that you will be working with they will be really happy to work with because then it, this happens with a lot of people when we are working with some junior developers that they they still don't know exactly what they are doing it really helps you know to make life easier for everyone and to make yourself look better more like a professional all right guys that's it for this video i hope you like these tips if you like it make sure to give me a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel if this is your first video and I'll see you in the next one.